people still are really hesitant to come forward. It's kind of a silent addiction. Now that mobile sports betting is legal in Indiana, you can do it on your phone anywhere, anytime. The Indiana Council on Problem Gaming won't take a stance on the new law. We stay neutral on, on all gambling because like, for most people, it's their entertainment. But for those who do develop an addiction, the state is giving 3.33% of the sports betting tax to an addiction services fund. The council isn't sure that's enough. Well, we'll see. Time will tell, but I, I think more could be set aside um, simply because of that 3.33%. Only 25% of that is actually guaranteed to go toward problem gambling. The state expects to make the most from this mobile option. In fact, 90% of all the income on sports betting comes from the mobile app, not from people who visit the casino. But no one knows how much it will make the state overall. We're very curious to see what our number is going to be. You know, at the beginning of the session, it was $2 million. Then it grew to eight million. Some have even predicted as much as 22 million. State Senator Ron Alting doesn't think this new law will increase gambling addictions in Indiana. Whoever's addicted to gaming is already in the casinos, already doing blackjack, roulette, craps, et cetera, et cetera, or booking with their local bookie on, on sports betting. Some signs of gambling addiction include mood swings, missing work or important events, and only talking about gambling wins, never losses. The family needs to know how to deal with a problem gambler. And if the problem gambler is not going to get treatment, how to deal with them and not enable them. Gaminon is one resource for families of gambling addicts. But unfortunately, there's not a lot of meetings in Indiana. The council says best case scenario, this new law brings more attention to the gambling addiction and maybe even more resources. I hope.